Hi everybody, so due to the closure of the campus there's a couple of bonus videos which I wasn't expecting to have to make. So the first one of these videos is going to go through the solutions to the mini test we did last week and then the second one of the videos is going to look at the um, solutions to the practice sheet 10 which we also didn't have time to talk about in class. Okay, so let me start with this mini test 9. This is looking at eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And the first two questions are just looking at the eigenvectors eigenvalue for 2 by 2 matrix. The third question is a question from quantum mechanics. So I'll talk a bit more about the meaning of that when I get to it. Okay, so first of all, question 1, you have this matrix 0, minus 1, 1, 0. You have to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues so that the exponential of the matrix is the rotation matrix and um, then because the matrix is anti-symmetric and orthogonal it can only have eigenvalues plus or minus i, prove that and then prove that if any matrix is anti-symmetric then its exponential must be orthogonal okay so there's quite a few interesting results on there so let me Prove them all, and then I will talk about it a bit. Okay. So if we start then, question one, part A. So you had this matrix. Find eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Okay. So the eigenvectors. We showed that the equation you need to solve is determinant a minus lambda i is zero. Okay. So that's determinant minus lambda minus 1, 1 minus lambda. So that's lambda squared plus 1. And that should be equal to 0. So lambda squared is minus 1, and therefore the solutions are lambda plus or minus, is equal to plus or minus i. Okay, so not too bad for that, finding the eigen, sorry, eigenvalues, that is. Next, we have to find the eigenvectors. So the equation for the eigenvectors is a minus lambda i times v is 0. OK, so first of all, I take lambda plus. So that's i. So then I get i minus 1, 1, minus i, minus i, like that, times xy should be equal to 0, 0. OK, and if you've got the eigenvalue right, then both of these equations should be the same. And in this case, they are, because if I multiply this equation by i, I get this equation. So you just get one equation, which is that x minus i times y is 0. In other words, x is i times y. So I'm going to choose y equals 1. So x is i, so v is i1. Okay, that's a possible choice. Okay, and lambda minus as well. So that's i minus 1, 1 i. x, y is 0, 0. So again, the equations are the same. If I take just the first one, I get i, x minus y is 0. So that means y is i, x. And I'll choose x is 1, so then v is 1i. Okay. So you may have chosen different here. You may have chosen not y is 1, but x is 1 or whatever. Then you get slightly different eigenvectors here. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as it's up to a constant this, then it's correct. So that's part A. Then part B, you're asked to calculate e to the theta a. Okay, so this is making use of the diagonalization formula. This is p times e to the theta lambda times p minus 1, where p is the matrix of eigenvectors. So the first one, v plus, is i1, and the second one, v minus, is 1i. Lambda is the matrix of eigenvalues, so that's i, 0, 0, minus i. And p minus 1 is just the inverse of this matrix, so that's minus 2. Okay, these are over, these are 
minus one seven two that inside. That's fine. Okay, so that's the inverse matrix. Yep. Okay, and then the reason you do that is it's easy to calculate the exponential of a diagonal matrix. You just exponentiate the non-zero elements. So this gives you e to the i theta zero zero e to the minus i theta. Okay. So therefore, e to the theta a is. I'll take the factor of a half to the front. So i one one i e i theta zero zero e minus i theta i one one minus i which is a half i one one i and then multiply these two together so I'll get minus i e i theta e i theta e minus i theta minus i e minus i theta sorry I should write a bit bigger right I'll write bigger now so this is a half so this gives you that plus that so I get e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta here I get that times that so I get i lots of e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta here I get that times that so I get minus i lots of e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta yep, and here I get that times that which again is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta okay and now you have to use the expressions for cos theta and sine theta in terms of the complex exponential so cos theta is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2 so you can see that is exactly what you have here and there right with the factor of 2 there and sine theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i okay and that is what you see you can have so 1 over i is the same as minus i so that is the same as what you've got here and it's minus what you've got there okay so this gives you e to the theta a is cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta which is the rotation matrix r theta okay so that's the result um so in the mini test i made a mistake actually i told you in the mini test that it should be minus here and plus there but that was my mistake so i'm, I'm sorry about that quite a few people got the right answer in spite of my mistake so well done if you did. Um, the mistake I made, by the way, was very simple. I just got the order of these two eigenvectors wrong. So I swapped the order of the columns in this matrix here. And if you work it out, that gives you an extra minus sign here. Okay, but this is the right answer. Okay, so that's part B. Then part C says matrix A is both anti-symmetric and orthogonal, which you can check it is from here. And prove that any matrix which is both anti-symmetric and orthogonal can only have eigenvalues plus or minus i. Okay, so we need to prove that. How are we going to prove that? So if you remember the theorem that I proved in the videos, it's very easy because the anti-symmetric matrix implies that the lambdas are imaginary that was a statement of the theorem okay so that means that lambda i is equal to i okay I'll call it lambda j lambda j is i times some constant a j let's say like this and the fact that it's orthogonal the theorem then tells you that the size of lambda is equal to 1 this tells that lambda j, which is i a j, is 1. So that means that a j is 1. So a size of a j is 1, so a j is plus or minus 1. Right here, a j is real, right? Okay, so a j is plus or minus 1. 
So that means lambda j is plus or minus i. Okay, so if you remember the theorem and what it says about the eigenvalues, it's quite easy. Um, one student gave another proof which doesn't use the theorem, which I thought is quite nice. So let me show you what that proof is. So here's another way of doing it without using this theorem. So you've got the matrix A, which is orthogonal. So the fact it's orthogonal means that A times A transpose is equal to the identity matrix. right? But the fact that it's anti-symmetric means that A transpose is just equal to minus A. So if you put minus A into this equation, you get that minus A squared is equal to I. Okay. But minus A squared, if the diagonalization formula, you can write this as P times lambda squared P minus 1 is equal to I. But you can multiply by P and P minus 1 here. And that just gets you minus lambda squared is equal to I. And if you think what this means in terms of the matrix, this is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. Everything else is 0. It should be equal to minus 1, minus 1 minus 1 squared, right? Lambda 1 squared. So the square of each lambda must be equal to minus 1, and therefore lambda j is equal to the square root of minus 1, which is plus or minus i. Okay, I thought that was quite a nice proof, which doesn't make use of the theorem that I proved. Okay, okay and then finally for question 1 part d, um, prove that if B is an anti-symmetric matrix, then E to the B is an orthogonal matrix. Okay, so the idea is, is fairly simple. If you take E to the B here, and you look at its transpose, then what's this? So the easiest way of thinking about this is in terms of the expansion, I think. So this is 1i plus b plus b squared over 2 factorial plus b cubed over 3 factorial and so on. Transpose all that. Okay. But b is anti-symmetric, so that means b transposed is equal to minus b. So that means b to the power n transposed is minus 1 to the n, b to the n. This is i minus b plus b squared over 2 factorial minus b cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. But this, by definition, is e to the minus b. Okay. And then these things are inverse matrices. If you just want to show that, then you can show that using the diagonalization formula. Um, e to the b times e to the minus b. This is p times e to the lambda p minus 1 times p times e to the minus lambda p minus 1. So the p's cancel. So this is p times e to the lambda 1, e lambda 2, and so on. e minus lambda 1, e minus lambda 2, and so on. p minus 1. But you can see when you multiply these together, you just get 1, 1, 1, right? This is p times the identity times p minus 1. And this is 1, this is 1, and so on, which is identity. Okay, so therefore, e to the minus b is e to the b minus 1, exactly as it is in the case of just numbers, right? This is also true. So this shows that e to the b is orthogonal. Okay, so what we've shown is the exponential of an asymmetric matrix is orthogonal in general. Okay, and you can similarly prove that the exponential of an anti-Hermitian matrix is unitary. So that's an equivalent theorem. Works in the same way as here. Okay, let me just quickly talk about how that question was graded. So this question was worth 38 marks, so it was quite a lot. And it as follows. So part one for finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, that was a total of 14 marks. Part B um, 
finding the exponential that was a total of 10 marks and these proof parts part C was 6 marks and part D was 8 marks okay so in total 38 marks for that most people got A and B okay and then C and D not so much okay so that's question one let me now go through question two So here is question two. Um, it's asking you to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of another matrix, minus two, three, minus six, seven, and then find four matrices, which are kind of the square root of this matrices. So find four matrices Q such that Q squared is C, and show in general that if you have a diagonalization, diagonalizable M by M matrix, which has non-zero determinant, then there are 2 to the power n, that was a misprint, 2 to the power n distinct matrices which square to give you that matrix. Okay, so this question is really looking about the, the square root of a matrix, right? If we say the square root of c is equal to q, what that means is that q squared equals c. And what it's saying is in the numbers there were two solutions to this equation, right? Plus or minus. But in, the, in an M-Bayer matrix, there are two to the N solutions to this equation. That's what this question is really asking you to show. Okay, so let's go through it. Question two. So part A, find the eigenvectors eigenvalues. Okay, so this is C, so the eigenvalues are from the solution of debt C minus lambda I equals zero, so that's the determinant minus two minus lambda three minus six seven minus lambda. Okay, so that's minus two minus lambda times seven minus lambda plus eighteen. That's lambda squared minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5. Lambda minus 14 plus 8 is plus 4. And that factorizes lambda 4 and 1, isn't it? Lambda minus 4. Lambda minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so there are two eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is 1. Lambda 2 is 4. There they are. Okay. Now we need to find the eigenvectors. And again, this is C minus lambda I times V is zero. So if we do it for lambda one is one first. So C minus lambda is minus three, three, minus six, six, x, y. 0, 0. So that simply means that x equals y, right? So I'm going to choose x equals 1. So v1 is 1, 1. Okay, and do the same for lambda 2. So c minus 4 times i is minus 6, 3, minus 6, 3. x, y, 0, 0. So this means that 2x equals y. So again, I'll choose x equals 1. So v2 is 1, 2. OK, so you found the eigenvectors and eigenvalues like that. OK, part b is asking you to find the square root. So solve q squared equals c. OK. and the way to do it is you say that q is equal to, okay, we well say that if c is equal to p times lambda times p minus 1, then q should be equal to p times lambda to the half times p minus 1, okay? And what are the matrices here? Well, p is the matrix of eigenvectors, 1, 1, one 2. Lambda is the matrix of eigenvalues, 1, 0, 0, 4. And 
p minus 1 is just the inverse. So that's 2, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. So you see that there are four solutions here, and the four solutions come from what you can choose lambda to the half. So you need to take the square root of each of these, right? So it's the square root of 1, square root of 4, 0, 0. But you can choose plus or minus, right? And you can choose plus or minus here and plus or minus there. So altogether you have four choices. Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. So you have four choices. 1, 0, 0, 2. Minus 1, 0, 0, minus 2. Minus 1, 0, 0, 2. And 1, 0, 0, minus 2. Okay, so there are four choices, so therefore you get four possible matrices Q. Okay. So then you just have to work them out. You only have to calculate twice because this one is obviously just going to be minus this. And this one is obviously just going to be minus that. Right? So, so Q1, let's say, is 1, 1, 1, 2 times, I'll take this one, 1, 0, 0, 2. Minus 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, and if you multiply that out, oops, sorry. If you multiply that out, then this gets you 0, 1, minus 2, 3. Okay, Q2 is just going to be minus that. So 0, minus 1, 2, minus 3. Q3 is going to be this one. So Q3 is 1, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1. And if you work that out, that turns out to be minus 4, minus 6, 3, 5. And then Q4 is just going to be minus this. So 4, 6, minus 3, minus 5. So that's it. So you found these four matrices, Q, that one, that one, and these two down here. And because of the diagonalization formula, their square should be equal to the original matrix C. So let's just check that it works. You didn't have to do this on the exam, but I think it's, you know, it's worthwhile to check. So let's just do Q1 squared and Q3 squared. Q1 squared is 0, 1, minus 2, 3. 0, 1, minus 2, 3. So that is minus 2, 3, minus 6, minus 2, plus 9 is 7, okay, which is C, yep. And Q3 squared, that is minus 4, 3, minus 6, 5, minus 4, minus 6, 5. That's 16 minus 18 is minus 2, 12, minus 12 plus 15 is 3. 24 minus 30 is minus 6, and 18 minus 18 plus 25 is 7. Okay, so that one also works. And obviously the minus work will work as well, because minus 1 squared is 1, right? So that's it. So there are these four solutions to the square root. Okay, so that's part B. And then finally part C, you had to show that in a general case, there would be 2 to the n solutions. Okay, so argument is basically the same, we just have to write it out for a general matrix. So D is P A P minus 1, lambda, sorry, lambda is lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. Now you, you know in the question the determinant of D is not equal to 0, so this means that all of the lambdas are not equal to 0. Okay, and that's important because it means you get two solutions to the square root, right? If lambda is zero, you only get one solution to the square root. So that means that lambda to the half is equal to plus or minus square root of lambda one, plus or minus square root of lambda two, plus or minus square root of lambda n. Okay, and how many choices do you have? You have two choices, two choices, downwards, two choices. So the number of choices 
is 2 times 2 times times 2, n times, which is 2 to the n. Okay? So there are 2 to the n different matrices you can choose for lambda to the half. Just like in part b, it was a 2 by 2 matrix, so there were 4 different choices like this. So in general, there's 2 to the n choices. Um, we should check, though, that they are all distinct. In other words, we should check that if I have two different choices to this, lambda a half, and let's call it lambda tilde to a half, so these are just different choices of pluses and minus, then check that the matrices Q could also not be the same, right? Because it's possible that two choices would actually give you the same matrix, and then it wouldn't be a different one. But this is quite easy to check, because Q is equal to P times lambda to the half times P minus 1, and Q tilde is P times lambda tilde to the half P minus 1. So if lambda to the half equals, sorry, If lambda to the half is not equal to, okay, let me go the other way. So I'll do it backwards, okay? So if Q is was equal to Q tilde, then this would mean that P lambda to the half, P minus 1, would be equal to P lambda to the half, P minus 1. But you can see that the P's and P's inverses cancel. So this would give you lambda to the half is equal to lambda tilde to the half. Okay, so that's the same thing backwards, right? So this is OK. OK, so there are two n choices of lambda, and we've checked that these give you 2 to the n choices of q as well. So in general, you have 2 to the n square roots of, a, of an n by n matrix. So just before we finish this question, I want to make a note of a mistake a couple of students made, which you might not think it's very serious, but it is serious. Um, the eigenvectors we worked out were these. V1 is 1, 1. V2 is 1, 2. A few students wrote them as row vectors instead of column vectors. And this is bad. Okay, When we did the course on vectors, it didn't really matter. You could write it like this or like that. It didn't really matter, but when you're dealing with matrices, it really does matter how you write the matrix, how you write the vector. <coughs> and the reason is, well, let me tell you what the reason is. There are two kinds of eigenvectors, which are known as left eigenvectors and right eigenvectors. And the ones that we've seen are actually, you know, these ones, the ones that we've calculated, they're right eigenvectors. So, for example, the vector 1, 1 is an eigenvector because c times 1, 1, that's minus 2, 3, minus 6, 7, 1, 1, which is 1, 1. Okay? Now, the left eigenvectors are the ones, so okay, so the right eigenvectors is c times v equals lambda times v. Left eigenvectors are what you have for row vectors, and in this case, if you want to multiply this vector by the matrix, the vector needs to come first. So the left eigenvectors are the ones v, c equals lambda v. So the opposite way around. Okay. And an example of this left eigenvector is if I multiply by 2 minus 1 times c, then this gets me minus 4 plus 6 is, sorry, minus 4 plus 6 is 2, and then 6 minus 7 is minus 1. Okay, so you can see that this is also a left eigenvector of the matrix C with eigenvalue 1, okay, because it multiplies on the left and gives you the same thing. So in general, for each eigenvalue the matrix has, it will have a right eigenvector, which we've worked out, and a left eigenvector, which is here. Okay. 
and the relationship between them is the matrix P tells you the right eigenvectors. Okay, so the matrix P was this one here. So these are the eigenvectors. 1, 1 and 1, 2 are the right eigenvectors. The matrix P minus 1 tells you the left eigenvectors. So P minus 1 is here, and that means that 2 minus 1 and 1 minus 1, 1 are left eigenvectors. Okay, so these are the right eigenvectors, and these are the left eigenvectors. Okay, so that's not important for our course. In our course, we only looked at right eigenvectors. But I just want to explain to you why it's wrong to write the eigenvectors like this. Because if you write them like this, it looks like they should be left eigenvectors, but they are not left eigenvectors. The left eigenvectors are given by these. Okay, finally let me tell you how that question was graded. So question 2 was worth a total of 34 marks. Only had 3 parts. So again you got 14 marks for eigenvectors and eigenvalues. You then got 12 marks for finding the 4 square roots and you got 8 marks for the, the proof in the general case. Okay, so in total that's 34 marks. Right, now we need to go on to question 3. Here's the, the sheet again. So question 3, which is looking at quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, the spin of an electron is given by a two-dimensional complex vector V. Let n be a unit vector, so n is 1, and the result of the measurement of electron spin in the direction of this vector depends upon a given matrix here, okay? where again these are the Pauli spin matrices which we've seen quite a few times now. right? Part A, find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and part B is a question about quantum measurement. Okay, So I guess most of you don't know what all of these quantum terminology means. You didn't actually need to know that to do the question, because the question is just find eigenvectors and eigenvalues and then calculate some scalar products. So you didn't need to know it, but um, let me explain it a bit. Okay. Okay. So the idea of this question is looking at spin. And spin is a quantity which you can describe to all quantum particles. And in particular for the electron, it has spin a half. Um, this tells you something about um, its magnetic moment. So the fact that it has a spin means that it generates a magnetic moment, mu. It generates a magnetic field, in other words, in a given direction. Okay. Now this mu, as we said, in classical physics, as I've drawn it, it's just a three-component vector, right? Mu x, mu y, mu z. But in quantum physics, the electron spin is not specified by a vector like mu is specified by a two component quantum uh, complex vector so v1 v2 where these are complex numbers okay. that's just the way it is so this vector v tells you about the spin of the electron now you can do experiments and one of the experiments you can do is to measure the component of the magnetic moment in a particular direction and this is called the stern gerlach experiment. If you've taken my other class, you will have studied this with me. So it works as follows. You've got an electron here moving this way, and you put it through a, a non-uniform magnetic field, something like this. So the magnetic field is stronger at the bottom and weaker at the top. Okay? And as this electron moves through the magnetic field, according to the, if I call this Z, according to the Z component of its magnetic moment, it will move. It will either move this way or it will move down this way. Okay. And these two things correspond to different directions of the spin. So this one is called the spin plus a half. And this one is called the spin minus a half. Okay, it should really be called M. Okay, so you can do an experiment to measure the component of spin in a particular direction like this. Okay, and what the question is telling you is that the result of that experiment 
in quantum mechanics, if you know this vector and you want to know what's the result of this experiment going to be, then you have to look at the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix Sn. Okay? So n is the vector here, which is telling you the direction in which you're measuring the spin. And this matrix is defined as a half n dot sigma. This is a half x, y, z dot sigma matrices. So sigma x is this one. Sigma y is this one. Sigma c is that one. Okay, so take the dot product. That gives you a half z x minus i y x plus i y minus c. Okay, so by finding the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix, you can work out what the results of the experiment are. Okay. So part A then is find eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix. So eigenvalues, that means solving determinant Sn minus lambda i equals zero. So this is determinant of z over 2 minus lambda x minus i y over 2 x plus i y over 2 minus z over 2 minus lambda okay so what's that what you got here that's equal to c minus 2 minus lambda minus c over 2 minus lambda minus x minus i y x plus i y number 4 so this is a difference of 2 squared so this gives you lambda squared minus c squared over 4 and this is minus x squared plus y squared over 4 this is lambda squared minus x squared plus y squared plus c squared over 4 um, but we know that n is a unit vector. n is length 1, so therefore x squared plus y squared plus c squared is 1. Okay? Because the length of the vector n was 1. So therefore this is just lambda squared minus a quarter. And this should be equal to 0, which means that lambda is plus or minus a half. Okay. So it does have eigenvalues plus or minus a half, and that corresponds to the possible value of the spin measurements plus or minus a half in this experiment. Okay, finding the evex, so that means solving Sn minus lambda i times v equals zero. Okay, so let's take lambda plus minus lambda plus is a half. Then you get c minus one over 2, x minus i y over 2, x plus i y over 2, minus c plus 1 over 2. Now, a few people wrote x and y here for the eigenvector, and then you get an awful mess, because x and y here is not the same as x and y here, right? This x and y is telling you about the direction of the vector n, whereas this x and y is telling you what the eigenvector should be. So here you need to call it something else. So I'll call it a and b. Right? And that should be 0. Okay, so if you've done it right, then both of these equations will be the same. So you only have to pick one of them. So I will pick uh, the second one, I think. So that tells me that x plus i y times a minus c plus 1 times b is 0. So for example, you could choose a equals c plus 1 and b equals x plus i y. That would work because then they just cancel each other, right? So then v plus is going to be z plus 1 x plus i y okay, so we'll take that one 
and we need to do the same for lambda minus. So in this case you get c plus 1 over 2 plus minus i y over 2 plus i y over 2 and minus c minus 1 over 2 times a b equals 0 0 okay in this case I'll take the top one I think c plus 1 times a plus x minus i y times b is 0 so in this case I can choose a is minus x plus i y and b is c plus 1. Okay, that's going to work. So then I'll get b minus is minus x plus i y, c plus 1. Okay. So that's the end of part a. You found the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So part b is looking at measurement. Okay. So if I go back to the picture of the experiment here, you have the vector v to begin with which tells you the spin state of the electron and you want to know is it going to be here or here now in quantum mechanics you can't get a definite answer to this question you can't say definitely it's going to be here or definitely it's going to be there you can only calculate the probabilities and the way you calculate the probabilities is using the eigenvectors so we've seen that this state corresponds to the eigenvector v plus and this one corresponds to the eigenvector b minus okay and the rule is the probability of finding plus is equal to the dot product of the vector v with the vector v plus squared divided by the dot product of v with itself and v plus with itself okay and similarly the probability of measuring minus is v dot v minus squared divided by v dot v v minus dot v minus okay so these are just rules of quantum mechanics okay so you're asked to calculate this in the case where n is 1 over square root 2 1 0 1 okay so this means that v plus which was z plus 1 x plus i y this is going to be 1 over square root 2 plus 1 and then x is 1 over square root 2 and your original state v is going to be 1 0 so that's it, you just have to calculate now. So v dot v plus is 1 over square root 2 plus 1. v dot v is just 1. v plus dot v plus is 1 over square root 2 plus 1 squared plus a half. I suppose we better simplify that a bit. So that is a half plus 1 plus square root 2 plus a half so that's 2 plus the square root of 2 so therefore p plus is that 1 square root 2 plus 1 squared divided by 1 times 2 plus the square root of 2 okay so let's simplify it a bit so this is 1 plus a half plus square root of 2 divided by 2 plus square root of 2 which is 3 halves plus square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 so let's multiply by 2 minus square root of 2 2 minus square root of 2 like this then on the top you get 3 minus 2 plus 2 lots of square root of 2 minus 3 halves of square root of 2 so that's minus half square root 2 
and on the bottom you get 4 minus 2 is 2 Okay, so this is 1 minus a half the square root of 2 over 2. Sorry, that's, this is, should be plus, shouldn't it? Right? Plus 2. Okay. So we can write that as 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Okay. So that's the final probability, and you can work this out on a calculator. It's 0 0.85. Okay. So what does that mean? It means in our experiment you have an 85% chance of going up this way and therefore a 15% chance of going down that way when you do the experiment. Okay, so you didn't actually, as I say, you didn't need to understand what physically this means, but this is what you have to calculate. So if you go to study quantum mechanics, which you will do hopefully in the next year or so, you will see calculations like this. So I just put it in here to give you a bit of preparation for that course, which is notoriously difficult. Okay, so I think that's that's all I want to say about this mini test. Um, if you're interested to know your grade, then just drop me an email and I can email you the grades because we're unlikely to meet again before the final exam. Um, Right, so that's the end of this video, and then the next video I'm just going to do the solutions to worksheet 10, practice sheet 10.